everybody. I'm Alexis and this is Usman. Welcome to the Sweep Show podcast for the Neutral Corner Boxing. Uh, Usman, how are you doing today, man? I'm good, Alexis, man. Thank you for having me on. Been waiting to do this for a while, so looking forward to it. Yeah, it's good to have you. It's, uh, Thank it's, you, man. So there's Thank a lot you. going Pleasure. on. Pleasure. Yeah, there's so much to talk about. And uh, <clears throat> I know I got to talk to Kyle last time, but today it's Usman. I'm really excited to have you. So uh, kind of give me, you know, your rundown on how you got into MMA and, uh, you know, what are your interests in MMA and how it all started? Yeah, um, MMA, I think like Kyle said on the last podcast I saw, he was into boxing and boxing has been my sport as well. Um, but I kind of ventured out into MMA a little bit because I, like a lot of people in the group chat, um, shout out to Charlie and I know yourself, uh, we're big, I was a big wrestling fan, WWE. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I remember around the time, I think around 2008, nine, a few wrestlers were making the jump from the WWE to whatever MMA promotion. So mm-hmm. you obviously had Brock Lesnar went from um, the WWE to MMA. I'm not sure what promotion he started in, but I do know his first fight was against Minsu Kim, innit? Minsu yeah, Kim, yeah, I think it was uh, K1 um, Dynamite or something. K1 Dynamite, that's it. Um, yeah. And then Batista also made the move, Bobby Lashley as well. So I thought to myself, it was new at the time in the UK. There was no such thing as we never heard much of um, MMA before. Mm. And there used to be a channel, my UK heads will know, it used to be called Prime Time. And they used to show the repeats. So every now and again, I'd tune in to watch repeats. Sometimes they'd be showing a rerun of a Fedor fight. Sometimes they'd be showing, like I mentioned, the wrestlers I mentioned, they'll be fighting. So my love for MMA kind of started from uh, wrestling. So yeah, that's, and I've kind of oh, followed a, it from like 2009, 2010. So that's a good segue. You know, I, I wrestling <laughs> is, is a, it, it, it's, it's such an interesting thing to watch. I've loved wrestling since I was a kid and MMA. Yeah. Uh, so I've been a big fan of both, but I guess mixing them both up is a pretty cool way of, sort of yeah, getting yeah. Into, into MMA, you know? It's kind of like, you know, when you use, obviously as you get older, you lose touch of wrestling. You kind of mm-hmm. move more towards the adult oriented sport, which is MMA. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it does give you that kind of, kind of attachment to your childhood when you're watching all sorts going on in the octagon. So, yeah, man. <clears throat> I agree. And so, um, you know, to segue into MMA and wrestling, there's just so much going on uh, right yeah, now yeah, with yeah, MMA. Yeah. It's yeah. the first episode of the Sweep Show. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a lot of news to catch up on. First of all, the fallout of UFC 259. Yeah. Um, it was an event that was hyped up. Uh, some people left disappointed. Um, obviously, we had the whole uh, Peter Yan, Peter Yan versus Aljamain mm-hmm. starting controversy. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? What, what do you uh, What did you feel after watching that? The whole Yan and Aljo thing, I thought it was yeah. a bit, you know, of course it was an illegal strike. You can't be throwing those strikes in the octagon. Mm-hmm. Um, and Aljo will fee- feel bittersweet in the way he won the title. Um, but I know inside he's buzzing. Of course he is. You know, he tried, you know, he had this little front, you know, he threw the belt, acted, acted as if he wasn't impressed or surprised or satisfied with the win. But I know he was. So you could say... Aljo, that fight, I think he did start off well, to be fair. But um, watching it back, I always thought it was going to be a matter of time before Jan took mm-hmm. over. And I would, I did think he was going to stop him towards the end of the fight. But obviously, circumstances changed and um, he got the win. Um, I'm just hoping there's a rematch sometime down the line. Of course, there will be. But um, I just hope we get like, a, I still feel like that chapter isn't closed on that book yet. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping, I'm hoping the rematch kind of sorts things out between the two and we get a solidified champion because some people still argue Aljo won the belt in an unfair way. He's not the legitimate champion. So, yeah, I think if Dane is clever, he'll know, make the rematch, um, see if we get a clear winner and then that winner will be able to call themselves the rightful champion. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, they're, they're setting that up. I think what happened with Aljo, it makes sense. Um, there, there's just winning a title even that way can be emotional i understand i know a lot of people are angry you know him but it's winning a ufc title and obviously it wasn't the way he wanted to do it. i'm sure he wanted to to beat peter yan and i'm sure yan's disappointed as well it was illegal you know i thought the finish was was okay i don't know about giving aljo the belt but that's that's the mm-hmm. rule of the ufc you know uh that's just the way it is and uh um, and they're gonna run it again there's no doubt obviously i think Jan is the favorite now, now that we've seen them. But I think Sterling can adjust. I thought that he just threw a little too much too early. He was going a little too hard. And uh, I think if he paces himself, there's a chance he could do something. I know a lot of people think that he's he's uh, automatically screwed. 
but you know this is MMA, you know, and it's it's a game of inches, and I think that there's a lot that can be done for Sterling, and he can he can pull it off. Um, but I mean, it wasn't the way we wanted it to end. Hopefully, it ends differently uh, in the second fight. Uh, Amanda Nunes. I mean, what is there to say? <laughs> you know, that was four foregone conclusion there. I think um, she's just she's just unstoppable. She's an absolute machine. Um, she scares me sometimes. Um, yeah. I'm, I feel she scares a lot of guys, but um, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. But um, she's just unstoppable. Um, baddest woman on the planet. There's no question about it. Um, she beat you know Rousey with ease within 90 seconds. She won the belt with ease. She beat Cyborg with ease. Um, and every other challenger who's come up against her, she just kind of picked off. Um, I think to myself, when it comes to Nunes, what's next for her? Uh, what else can she achieve? If she was to walk away from the sport tomorrow, um, I think she'll be satisfied with what she's more than satisfied with oh, yeah. what she's achieved. So um, there's not much else I can say on her other than, you know, she's wiped out all her competition. And I feel there's not a depth in the women's divisions as much there is as the men's. So it's just going to have to be a question of, does she want to, you know, how long does she want to hold on to the belt for? So mm -hmm. I think that's the only thing I kind of worry about is will her legacy be tarnished in the sense that because she's beaten the best women, you know, Rousey, Cyborg, um, Misha Tate, how long before people start saying the level of opposition was just rubbish? Just, you know? Yeah, you know yeah, yeah I understand what you mean. But um, overall, yeah, I was impressed. I'm always impressed with Nunes. So yeah. I, I expect nothing less other than a brutal finish every time she steps in the octagon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that uh, her future is, uh, I mean, she wants to keep fighting, she said. Obviously, the whole thing about Ming and Anderson being released after, yeah, I don't know yeah, about yeah. the featherweight division, that's kind of in flux. But other than that, I mean, she's she's unbeatable. There's some, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can do a third Valentina Shevchenko fight. Uh, you can go with that. But even then, the interest may not be the same as it was maybe a few years ago. But uh, I don't know. I mean, there's just not many roads she can go. She can keep fighting if she wants. She'll just beat them all, I'm sure. Unless somebody comes in that's that uh, pulls off the upset, which is always possible, but I mean, always you know, possible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's always possible. It, one thing I was going to mention is maybe she should be looking at the belt record for defenses, maybe, because she's made yeah, yeah. F f six or seven defenses in total, including mm -hmm. both belts. So mm -hmm. maybe that's something a route she might want to go down, uh, break Demetrius Johnson's record and um, yeah. ride out on a high, maybe. So yeah, I'd go for that too. That, that, yeah. that would keep cementing her legacy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh the main event jan blahovic adesanya obviously uh blahovic with uh, what i thought was the performance of his career you can tell he was exhausted by even the third round and he still pulled it out i mm -hmm. mean it was it was pretty much to me it wasn't an, an amazing crazy fight but it was uh it was so good to watch it was so good to watch because you felt him pushing through the the tiredness pushing through the exhaustion uh, he went for those takedowns. He was going in there. He was he was eating some some clean shots as well, and he was landing some. Mm -hmm. So he was in there, and it was it was it was amazing to watch. Props to, to to Izzy as well. You know, he went in there against a guy who was probably twenty pounds heavier than him, and he came in there and he still made it a close fight. That's that's pretty wild if you think about it. Um, what are your thoughts on on that that result and how it you know plays into both middleweight oh, and light heavyweight? Same goes, man. I thought it was a good performance from Black Ovid. Um thing about Blachowicz is I've never kind of warmed to him as a champion because it wasn't a while back he um, went life and death with Jimmy Manuel. So in my head, he's still the same guy who's been in them wars with Jimmy Manuel. But fair play to him. He dug out, became that heavyweight champion. Um, I do think it was a little bit, I wouldn't say disrespectful, but more ignorant from Izzy's side. The fact he came in at his normal middleweight weight, 185. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nowadays it's not hard to put on weight, to move up and down and go through divisions. So I do think it was kind of because he thought his mo his movement and speed would get the better of Blachowicz, but obviously not. Um, goes without saying, Izzy will still dominate middleweight. Um, and again, there's not much of a talent pool in middleweight like there was a few years ago. I mean, you've got if he wants to fight with Whitaker again, um, I would like to see that again and improved uh, Bobby Knuckles. Um, even someone like Kanane, if he can rack up a few wins. But other than that, I don't obviously see anyone really giving. Izzy a run for their money at middleweight. Um, as for light heavyweight, um, everyone knows that was John Jones's division. I still see it as John Jones's division before he mm -hmm. decided to vacate the belt and move up. Um, again, the talent pool is not as deep as I hoped it can be. I mean, you've got Blachowicz, um and the other guys, all you know, Reyes, Santos, Walker. I kind of consider them 
fringe contenders, you know? Um, yeah. How many of them have got the ability to, they might have the ability to beat Blachowicz, but how many of them can hold on to the belt for three or four or five title defences and cement a legacy? So um, it would be interesting to go, which it would be interesting to see which route Blachowicz goes down. Um, probably, you know, I don't think he can break John Jones's defence of, what was it, eight title defences I like him? It was like eight or nine, something like that. Yeah. Something stupid like that. So I don't think he'll be able to break his record. Um Age may be a factor for him because you obviously got the, long, the young guys coming up, um, Dominic Reyes for one. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, those fringe contenders may get a chance at the belt again. And um, second time around, who knows? It's UFC, um, anything can happen in the octagon, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that, um, I think obviously Glover to share is next. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, two two older uh, guys fighting for the title, which is, which should be a fun fight. Uh, Glover deserves that. Um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, the talent pool at heavyweight is interesting because uh, obviously there's there's Prochaska, Jerry Prochaska or whatever from oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. from Europe, and uh, he's uh, he's yeah he's a kickboxer and uh, he's a bit wild. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you can tell that he's he, he's got some talent and he's fighting Dominic Reyes. That's a sick fight. <laughs> Excited for that one. Um, he's obviously um, on the way up, and then obviously Rakic who uh, who Alexander beat Rakic, Santos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he he's a very explosive fighter, but he seems to be working. He seems to be very strategical now. He's very he's very strategic in, in mm-hmm. the way he approaches his fights now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you saw that with Santos. You saw mm-hmm. that against Anthony Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he could be a guy that could also uh, be knocking on the door next. Um, yeah, I mean, Dan Poirier it's just it's just in an odd position right now. It feels like there's change, but some of the old. We still have Blahovich and Teixeira from the old. And then we have some of the newer guys like Rahatchka and Rakic. Uh, and then you even have Santos who's still in there in the mix. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's just, and then obviously uh, Teixeira and, um, and Reyes. So it's, it's, it's weird. And then middleweight, uh, I mean, yeah, who, who is there for, for, uh, for Izzy? I mean, uh, we're going to have Kevin Holland fight uh, today. Uh, maybe Bonson, he, yeah. he can, he can, uh, he can do something. Uh, there's also, uh, I mean, Bobby Knuckles, I love Bobby Knuckles. He's my favorite UFC fighter, but I mean, if he does something different, he, I mean, it was frustrating watching that first fight because you yeah, felt yeah. he was doing something, he was doing everything wrong. Yeah, so he yeah. could come in and do something way different. And who knows, because we've caught, we've obviously seen Izzy in, in, uh, in difficult situations. It can be done. Uh, Vittori's done it when he's put him into a close fight. He's also someone on the way up there until, um, you know, <laughs> Darren Till's Darren Till. I, w- uh, I was going to mention Darren Till, but I thought he's. He, I do think Darren Till was a hit and miss type of fighter. I don't know what you think about him. He's obviously, uh, he, he's obviously yeah. being English. He's someone I get behind, but I feel like with Till, all the big fights he's had, bar one the way he hasn't performed the standard I've expected expected of him. And the standard yeah, we know he can perform as well. Yeah, it's because he has so much hype, and and yeah, uh, yeah. and understandably so, because he's the personality. I think that he's he's one of MMA's coolest personalities. I enjoy watching the fight. I think it, it, it's he has a lot of nuances to his game that a lot of people just kind of don't mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. don't really appreciate, just because you know it can be a slow burner at times, like the the Wonder Boy fight, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the Gastelum fight. But um, he he's clearly very talented. He has a lot of tools to make it a good fight with Izzy, and Izzy clearly wants to fight him. He said it on Twitter before. So I think that he's an interesting guy to watch. It's just, yeah, sometimes I feel like he's a bit predictable and it kind of mm-hmm. it kind of hurts him. But at the same time, he has a lot of tools at his disposal. So sometimes the predictability doesn't really matter. He just kind of he kind of just gets it done. Um, but he's got a lot of tools and I think he he's an interesting guy to watch. So middle is a bit weird. I think the social media hype doesn't really help him too because I see him, I see him doing all sorts of antics on social media. Um sometimes I think to myself, Darren Till maybe should take a backward step and concentrate on his fighting. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, like you said, he's a personality. It's what attracts people to watch him fight. So, yeah, I, I think he's just, uh, I think he's just trying to have fun with people and then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then get some attention and which is, which I guess makes sense. You know, the, it, it's a, it's a, it's a promoting a business for, for the UFC. It's a self-promotion type of thing going on right mm-hmm, now. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. he's doing a good job of it because mm-hmm. he's got eyes. I mean, I remember, I, after the the Wonder Boy fight and him calling out everybody, I, I started mm-hmm. watching him fight. You know, he got my attention. So um, it should be interesting to see where that goes. And then obviously a uh, quick rundown of what happened uh, last weekend with uh, Leon Edwards uh, and Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. Unfortunate. I mean, super unfortunate. Um, you don't want to see that happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see why people were kind of angry at, at, at Edwards, but I also understand his frustration. He's been out for a while. There's a lot of things that haven't gone his way. 
And so I understand, you know, like, man, this had to happen. Uh, it sucks for both guys. It sucks more for Bilal, obviously, because of the eye poke. But, uh, you know, I thought Leon Edwards was on his way to winning. Um, he was he was, he was, was starting to, to get it done. He was he was looking very quick. Uh, he had a certain strategy. He wanted to just try different things. He wanted to go for takedowns, see what he can do, how he feels. Knock off the rust, basically. Um, but he looked good. I thought he was looking really good. And... Um, you know, I hope they do run it back just so we can get, you know, some closure on there. But if not, I would love to see Edwards versus Wonderboy. That'd be a, a great fight for – or even Edwards versus Covington uh, mm-hmm. for the number one contender. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, uh, what are your thoughts on that? So, yeah, I thought it made sense for Edwards to fight um, Kobe next, like you said. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's unfortunate what happened in the fight. Um, but it's a fight, you know, fingers – but whatever, your hands are everywhere at the time. So yeah. it's understandable, but also unfortunate. Um, am I interested in seeing them two run it back? No, because I feel like um, Bilal Muhammad was a, of course, he's a last minute replacement for Chimaev. I don't know what's going on with Khamza, but um, yeah. I'm hoping he comes back. So uh, for Edwards, I feel like, yes, he looked good. Um, let's throw him in against one of the top five guys. Um, I still want to see the Chimaev fight, you know, simply because of the hype and everything around Chimaev. So if a fight with Kobe or Wonderboy does not materialise, I would love to see him in against Chimaev again. Because um, it's been a long time coming. Edwards has been in and around the top five, top three level. Um, I would have loved to see the Masvidal fight after the whole shenanigans in London. But um, obviously Masvidal is scheduled to fight Kamaru next month. Yeah. But um, back to Edwards, I think, yeah, I think, like you said, Edwards against Colby, winner fights the winner of Masvidal and Kamaru. It's the best way. Um, that way you get grudge matches as well because we all know Colby and Jorge, the public fallout about a year or so ago from being good friends. Um, everyone also knows the whole Jorge and um, Edwards altercation which took place as well. But um, yeah. I think the World Tour division is interesting. It's in, it's, it is interesting. When I look at the divisions throughout the UFC, there's a lot of depth at welterweight so it'll be interesting to see what Dana White does next with um, Edwards it has to be a number one contender fight for sure yeah, because he's been waiting sure. too long he's been waiting way too long um, I feel he's a good guy as well he, he deserves it so yeah let's hope Dana can give him that number one contender shot yeah for sure I, I definitely agree and then uh, the last bit of news so Khabib uh, yep yep really really uh sad i mean that's pretty much the best way to describe it could be retiring officially mm-hmm. at least from dana white and from himself mm-hmm. um it seems to be official um already the lightweight division immediately moved on with uh the booking of michael chandler versus charles Oliveira for the lightweight title in houston um and then obviously the plans are for conor mcgregor versus dustin poor year three in july justin gaethje kind of the the odd man <laughs> out um so Obviously, it seems to be that the UFC has faith, I feel, in Michael Chandler putting him in the title fight. That's kind of the reason why I think they, they did that instead of doing it for Poirier versus McGregor 3. I think that they feel that you can't cheat Oliveira out of a title mm-hmm. shot. He's Everybody's clamoring for it. He, mm-hmm. he deserves it with the way he's looked. And I think this is kind of the middle ground the UFC gave the hardcore fans and the, and the fans who are starting to rally behind uh, Chandler. Because a lot of casual fans are starting to get behind Chandler with the way he looked on the McGregor card. And then obviously all the hardcore fans are loving Oliveira the way he's been he's been around forever and he's finally putting it together. So this is to me that kind of uh that mix for both to satisfy both. Some people aren't happy, some people think Poirier deserve it or Gaethje, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. is understandable. I think mm-hmm. there's four guys who deserve a title shot, honestly, in that division. Um, but I think this fight's this fight's great. This is an amazing fight. To me, this is almost a 50-50 fight. And there's so many ways it can go. And and I think this is a, the best fight you can make that's not, you know, maybe Poirier versus Oliveira, Poirier versus Chandler. But mm-hmm. this is such this is a great fight. And then Poirier versus McGregor, I mean, run it back. It's, it's a big fight, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Poirier is looking for that another big check. And obviously mm-hmm. McGregor is looking to get back. And uh, the, the only thing is Gage, he's left out, which, you know, is unfortunate. But I'm pretty sure that they have plans for him or they're going to, you know, maybe save him up for, for a winner or for maybe he gets the title shot next after that. Well, what are, what, are your, what are your thoughts now with the lightweight division kind of taking shape um, after the whole Khabib thing? Firstly, Khabib's, Khabib's retirement, I knew from when he let, when he put those gloves down in the middle of the octagon after the Gaethje fight, uh, I knew he was done. There was no way he was going to make a comeback. 
because in that part of the world, when they say one thing, they'll honour it. And I kind of knew, OK, he might fiddle with the thought of coming out of retirement. I mean, the fighters, they fight. That's what they do for a living. But, um, uh, yeah, I always knew he'd stay true to his word and stay retired. Obviously, he's made official a few days ago. But um, now he's retired. It's just like you said, it's opened up a floodgate for so many good fights to be made. Um, so like I said, the title fight's official. Um, Pitbull against Oliveira. Um, I'm looking forward to it because I wasn't really sold on Chandler when he first came into the UFC. I knew he did well in Bellator, he won the belt. But um, I thought, okay, he'll just be like a filler type of fighter, something like Ben Askren or someone. But mm-hmm. to be fair to him, he looked awesome in the he looked awesome on the McGregor undercard. So, like you said, the UFC thought, okay, he looked well in the McGregor undercard. We'll throw him in against the big dogs now and see where he's at. Um, so it'll be a good test for him as well because the talent pool from Bellator to UFC in comparison is so, so different. So we'll yeah. see how he does against the bigger guys at um, lightweight in UFC. Um, and also, like I said, the four guys who deserve the title shot. Um, that'll be interesting as well. Poirier McGregor. Um, let's be honest, Conor is always going to be a big draw in MMA. That guy can lose 10, 15, 20 times. People will still pay, pay, pay to watch him because of his personality, the way he sells a fight. Um, and his last couple of fights, guaranteed entertainment. You know, first comeback against Cerrone, then you obviously had the Poirier setback. Um, it'll be interesting to see because people have been saying for a long time now, is Conor's heart still in fighting? Whether it's UFC, whether it's boxing, has he still got the heart? Because when he made so much money like he has, you know, he secured the bag against Floyd. After that, I've seen a different type of Conor compared to the one a few years ago. I feel he's not the same Conor, he's not as hungry. Um, he doesn't, I feel he doesn't have the drive and motivation because, you know, he's done, people might argue he hasn't defended his belt, but he's done, he's gone down the route in the sense that, you know, he's won a belt at a featherweight, he won a belt at a lightweight. He's, like mm-hmm. I said, big fight against Floyd. Um, and I feel like he's taken up too much of a boxer's personality, if you get for, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like even in the last fight, um, Daniel Cormier and John Anik pointed out, why is he so, why is he so heavy on his, on his lead leg fall is to boxing stance. Um, and that's not what I associate with Connor because when Connor first came on the scene, um, people remember his movement is what blew me away. When he was working with Ido, Ido Portal, mm-hmm. um, I was quite impressed with his movement, his fluidity, and I thought this guy can go to the top. But obviously, you know, whatever happened, happened. And Pouye, fair dues to Pouye, you know, to come back from the fight against Khabib and to beat Connor in the way he did. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I will watch. I will be interested in the third fight just to see if, you know, there's so many storylines behind it. Is Connor's heart still in there? Has he recovered from the loss? Um, I do think even if Connor does win, it's not fair to throw him in, in the title fight straight away. So maybe if he beats Poirier, make him fight someone like Gaethje or um, maybe fight the loser of Pitbull against Oliveira. So, um I think as long as Connor and Puya, as long as that whole storyline plays out and you've got Gaethje in the background, that division will always be an interesting division for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still think this division, even with the loss yeah. of Khabib, is is a top division in, in the UFC. There's just some, there's just so many talent. And then you have the rise of like Islam. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone he I forgot to mention. Good on the, yeah. yeah, he looked good on the on UFC 2, 259. And then there's obviously uh, Dos Anjos still... still um, Still going you know, at sorry, it. Alex, I'm going to interrupt you, but because when you mentioned Islam, uh-huh. um, I was going to say um, how disheartening is that for the division, the top guys? Because you've had Khabib dominate for years and years, even when he wasn't champion. You know, he was ragdolling guys, Abel Trujillo, Rafael Dos Anjos, Edson Barbosa. And then now you've got a Southpaw region come up on the scene. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think that there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of similarity between, obviously, there's yeah. a lot between Khabib and Islam, but there's a lot of differences in their games. And mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's going to be interesting to see how Islam, you know, when he reaches that, that upper echelon of the division, I wonder who's going to go up against next. I'm assuming it's going to be Dos Anjos. That'd be a good fight. Yeah, yeah. Or Felder. Um, but um, yeah, he's on his way up, you know? No, yeah, like I said, not too many fringe guys are lightweight as well. Paul Felder, Ali Quinta. There's it's quite a deep division. Even like you said, RDA still, I think he maybe maybe has a little bit left in him. So 
it'll be interesting to see where that division how it plays out over the next year or so yeah and then also um hooker um oh yeah and hooker, he yeah. can re- rebound he's, he's he's clearly got a lot of talent you know and uh we'll see where it goes so uh <laughs> that, that's that's a bit for the for mm-hmm. main news now we move on to uh the upcoming event obviously tonight is uh holland versus brunson uh which should be a good good card but i think right now the talk and the, the tension that's that's kind of been going on in mma the thing that's been on everybody's corner of their eye is ufc 260 mm-hmm. uh we've had a, a string of, of pay-per-view events that have been pretty good actually uh, we could say very good in terms of hype you know we had four year versus mcgregor and now and then uh, adesanya versus black Blachowicz, and now it's gonna be miocic versus Ngannou too uh that's a huge main event. At least for me, I think this is one of the bigger main events. It's kind of gone under the radar because there's been a big, there's been so many big fights, I feel already. Um, but this fight's huge, um, especially for the future of heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Um, the first fight obviously went the way it did. Um, and Ganu obviously was less experienced. He he was he's kind of the same fighter he wa- he still was at the time, but very different at the same time. There's just something different about him this time than the first time we saw him against Miocic. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Obviously, Miocic is also very different. You know, he's been through his wars. He's the the Cormier fights. Um, so, what what are your thoughts on this fight? What what do you what do you think about? Do you think it's going to go different? Do you think it might be the same? Uh, where does John Jones mix into this? Yeah. You know what, Alexis? This fight, I've been looking forward to it since it's been announced. Um, yeah. That first round in the first fight, it gave me all sorts of heart palpitations. I was jumping up out of my seat at like four in the morning. I'm thinking that Garni's going to knock him out and Garni's going to knock him out. But fair play to Stipe. Yeah, weather the storm and whatever happened, happened afterwards. Um I've heard the argument in the main event that Ngannou is a different fighter, he's a different animal, he's made some subtle changes to his game, but I don't see it. You know, his four or five fights since he's lost against Derek Lewis, they've all been first round KOs. Um, Curtis Blades, Cain Velasquez, JDS, Rosenstrike, and especially the Rosenstrike f- fight, I thought, it's like, I've seen videos of Ngannou training in the gym, you know, mm-hmm. he's got a boxing background, he's, he knows how to box. But that Rosenstrike fight, it was just like, you know what, forget all that. I'm just going to bludgeon you to, to near death. So it was quite, um, of course, you always got to be impressed with a first round knockout. But do I think he can rush Miocic the same way he did against Rosenstrike? Because he did get caught on the way in a few times. And we all know Miocic does carry power. Um, not to mention Ngarni does have a strong chin. But um, also, we haven't seen much of Ngarni's grappling since his loss against Derek Lewis. It's just all been, you know, first round demolition jobs. But um, it'll be interesting to see Ngannou's approach to the second fight because he knows maybe I might not be able to blitz me a Stipe like I did in the first fight because Stipe can weather a storm. Um, but again, it's the heavyweight division. Um, I would like to say I feel like whoever lands clean first wins, but that's not the way I, feel, I see this fight going. I do see, like you said, Stipe has been in wars, the three fights with Cormier. Um, and I feel Ngannou is the fresher in terms of longevity, first round KOs. It'll be interesting to see the game plan for each man. Um, there's no doubt Miocic will stick to his wrestling guns. And there's no doubt Ngannou will stick to his um, boxing, power punching. But um, I do feel like we haven't seen the gas tank of Ngannou tested as of yet since the Lewis loss. Um, It'll be interesting to see what changes he has made, if there is any changes to his cardio or, you know, his engine. Because for such a big guy, he's what, how tall is he? Six foot seven, six foot six? Uh, yeah, he's pretty tall. I think Nganu is six foot four and oh, six foot Miocic four. is, six, yeah, they're both six foot four, actually. Okay, but I think in the sense that Nganu's got so much muscle to carry as well. Yeah. You know, when you're walking around the oct- oct- uh, octagon for five five minute rounds with all that muscle to carry there will be a build up of lactic acid so um, it'll be interesting to see how he paces himself this fight because the way I see this fight going is either Miocic repeats what he did in the first fight or mm-hmm. Francis blitzes him in the first few rounds so either way I'm looking forward to it man and like I said John Jones he's definitely up next for the winner um, 
arguably the GOAT. You can't give him, you know, I would like to see him in a tune-up fight at heavyweight, but it's John Jones, you know. People will pay to watch Jones against Ngannou, Jones against Miocic. So it'll be interesting to see how he does against the bigger guys too, because there's a massive jump from 205 to heavyweight. The difference yeah. in size is, is, is crazy. So again, that's a division that, you know, I'm excited about because obviously you had Derek Lewis, you know, he's kind of made a resurgence, knocking out Curtis Blade. And people are saying Curtis Blades will be the next heavyweight champion. Um, Derek Lewis put a spanner in the works. Um, so I'll be interested to see what happens next for him. Cormier, as we know, is retired. Um, and again, the other, again, the fringe guys, you know, you've got your Volkov. Um, Overeem's made a little bit of a resurgence. He's an old, old, old school veteran. It'll be interesting to see how they all fare up against each other. But um, no doubt the winner for this fight will go on to fight Jones next. Um, yep. What are your thoughts on it? What do you think, like, what's going to happen in this fight? What's the... Uh, yeah, obviously, like you, once I heard about it, I got... Yeah, I got pretty excited. I got mm -hmm. really excited. I, I Like you, that first fight, the first round, I was completely just, you know, jittery. It was like, you know, it was so tense. You know, you were scared. You were excited. You know, it was it was a lot of feelings, you know, because you knew the kind of fighter that Nganu is yeah. and was. And Miocic, you know... At that time, we didn't consider him the greatest heavyweight of all time just yet. There was talks about it already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that after that, it's been established himself. And now it's clear that these guys have gone on almost similar but different paths. You know, <clears throat> Nganu just knocked everybody out. Other than the Derek Lewis fight, which I feel he happened because he was very gun shy. And I mm -hmm, feel that he mm -hmm. was very... He was, he, you know, I just felt he didn't have any confidence going into that fight after the whole Miocic uh, fiasco for him. And then he just blitzed everybody. I mean, he blitzed mm -hmm. blades and he wasn't expected to. You know, he wasn't the favorite. I mean, people were already down on him. He blitzed, you know, Dos Santos. He blitzed Rosenstrike. It was insane, though. He went through, Kane, through that. Kane Velasquez as well. Yeah, Kane Velasquez. Yeah, you see, mm -hmm. and the, it's insane. And then Miocic fights Cormier three times. The first time he was knocked out. The second time he he finished Cormier, but I mean it's not like he he you know went through it unscathed. You know he he took his punishment, and obviously the third fight same thing. He took his punishment, five round fight. So it's clear that these guys are much different fighters in terms of what they've been through since then. Um, I think Ngannou, the way he needs to win this fight is he needs to be patient. He can still be patient in one round. He doesn't have to completely blitz and just throw haymakers the first one like he did the first fight or even like he did against Roger Strike. He could try it. I mean, he might be. He, he's the type, type of guy that I could see him pulling it off, but I don't think he should try that. I think he should just stay calm and keep his distance. He has the first, he has the longer reach as well. He has that, that three-inch reach advantage. And his gas tank, I don't know if it's different. I don't know if it's better. I don't know what's happened since then. You have to assume it's at least a little better. Mm -hmm. You have to also assume that the first fight, he was throwing everything in that first mm -hmm. round that he could. So his gas tank was gone from then on. If he can at least hold some in, you know, and keep calm and keep patient. And he takes this fight to the second round and he, he can still do it, you know, but it's hard to say because for at that moment right now, it's just speculation because we haven't seen it. You know, we've only seen it in the Derek Lewis fight. And he didn't throw anything. Um, so, and you also have to remember Miocic for as great as he is. I always thought that his de his defense was a bit lacking. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've seen it against Cormier, mm -hmm. um, where he got caught. You've seen it against Stefan Struve a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So even the first, even the first JDS fight, the first one went yeah. back and forth, and, absolute wall. And uh, against Overeem, he was mm -hmm. caught. He was dropped. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> he's he 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 has a bit. Doesn't have deficiencies that are you know, completely obvious, but he can get hit. And he got hit against Nganu. It's just that he survived it. And then mm -hmm. whenever he got caught in the later rounds, Nganu just didn't have that same power because he was gassed. He was exhausted. There's a lot, there's a saying that uh, there's always a puncher's chance, right? You know, uh, if you're fighting against a heavy puncher, even in the 12th round, they always can get a chance to knock you out. And just look at Randall Bailey, you know, that's the type oh, of yeah, round yeah, I yeah, think yeah, about that, yeah, you know? Yeah. But Nganu was completely drained of his energy. That guy was at 0% that there was nothing there. That shot came in slow motion and it landed because, I mean, obviously Miocic was also pretty tired himself, but he had enough to where it was like, well, this doesn't really phase me as much. Pretty sure it, it, it you know, rocked him a little bit, but he had enough where it didn't rock him that bad. And I don't know if Nganu can keep that up. 
if it goes longer than than one round. So I'm gonna is, see. So it will be interesting because when you mentioned Randall Bailey, um, there's certain fighters who can uh, maintain their power over in boxing twelve rounds. You know, you got your Deontay Wilders, um, even Anthony Joshua to an extent. But I think with Ngannou, we haven't seen that. Like you said, the Miocic fight, he wasn't able to uh, hold his power over the five rounds. So it'd be interesting to see if he's worked on that. The endurance. Yeah, I, I hope he has because he's to me such a special talent. I've always thought Ngannou mm. was a special talent. The fact that he came into MMA so late and is already doing the things that he's doing, I don't think you. It's I think it's 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 to me it's special. I think that you, if you have that type of that power, that gift, you know, if you work on your game, you're you to me can be almost mm -hmm. unstoppable. You know, especially a heavyweight. Um, there's just not that many wrestlers in heavyweight, and even if there are wrestlers, wrestling isn't something you're gonna do for an entire five rounds in in heavyweight. You're gonna get exhausted, and so. I think that Nganu has, has all the gifts. I think you're right. This goes one or two ways. This goes early knockout or Miocic just rides out the decision. Which one's more likely? I don't know. To me, it's 50-50. I think this is truly this is truly a, a, a toss -up. You know, I don't I don't I don't know who's 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 got the advantage anymore because it's just they're different fighters. They're different in the sense mm -hmm. that what they've been through, and we don't know how improved Nganu is. Yeah, he might be better than what he was, obviously, because he's trained more. He's obviously been in the game longer now, but the the fights that he's been in have been short, you know. And and I mean, compared to 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 Miocic, had three fights, and I think Ngannou's had, I want to say five. And Ngannou's probably been in there, maybe an hour or thirty minutes less than 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 Miocic. Yep, yep. It's just crazy to think about, you know, and. I don't know. I we also have to take into account how how much Miocic has on his tires. You know, if he has any tread, if he's he's you know if he's on the tail end, we don't know either. We don't know how he is after those 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 Cormier fights. So there's uh, we have to take that into account as well. If I had to give a prediction, I would say I'm gonna go with Ngannou. I'm gonna go with the knockout. I think that it's fair enough to assume that he can do it. And he's gonna have to have learned something, at least one <laughs> thing from that <laughs> first fight. Mm -hmm. And I think if he if he even learns that, if he can just be a bit more patient, he can get it done. You know what's interesting? Um, now you mention it, it is um, I was going to mention um, Miocic, the wars he's been in, um, the accumulation of punishment he's taken. Of course, it's bound to have an effect on the chin. There's been countless examples of fighters who've been known for their chins, and they've just it's just been worn out. Mark Hunt's a good example. Um, Mm -hmm. Super Samoan he was you know his head was made of cement steel and then obviously the punishment he took against Miocic Fabrizio Verdum it just kind of wore out for him towards the end and I'm a big Stipe fan I'm hoping I'm hoping the three fights of Cormier haven't taken too much out of his punch resistance um, it'll be interesting to see it'll be interesting to see because I feel again accumulation if Ngannou lands repeatedly in the first couple of rounds we may see an early night yeah, I, I think so too. I think that even if he lands one punch, it can change mm -hmm. the whole course. We could see a minute or two of of Miocic landing some good shots, you know, some jabs and then kicks and everything, and he's he's doing some work, and you see a counter coming in from Ngannou, and the round just completely changes. Do you think? Do you think Miocic will be able to KO Ngannou? Oh yeah, I think that's certain, think? that's a possibility that we that people have to to take into, take account. into account. I think yeah. he, he can he can do it, especially if if it goes to where. And Gan was completely exhausted into oh, yeah, the fourth yeah. or something or third, like just trained of energy. And then Miocic is at, even at fifty percent. He can, he he could probably hurt him and then finish him with strikes on the ground. It would. It's more likely he could knock him out in the first, like with with a punch and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Ngannou goes down to sleep. But um, yeah, he can do it. I think I think he's capable. It's exciting. He's more than capable. It's exciting. There's nothing like uh, yeah. Big, it, 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 nothing. it feels yeah. Heavyweight yeah, fights. There's are nothing big. like a big heavyweight title fight. Boxing yep. UFC is it's just something about it. it's a glamorous division. Yeah, yeah. It's the glamorous baddest man on the planet. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And the uh, yeah. I was going to ask. Do you think if Ngannou was to take the belt, do you think he can dominate the heavyweight scene? You know, obviously John Jones coming up from two hundred five. You know, these the names he, I mentioned as well. He's a boomer bust. You know, mm -hmm. he either we're going to see something spectac spectacular, or you know, we we, we won't. <laughs> and I think that. um Against Jones, the same thing. It's it's we don't know how Jones is gonna look. There's a lot of uncertainty yeah. there. Um, that's the thing with Ngannou. Um, even when he fought Rosenstrike or JDS 
or Kane, all of those fights had uncertainty because mm-hmm. Kane, we didn't know how he was gonna look. Um, we didn't know how Ghana was gonna look either. Against JDS, we don't know how JDS is gonna look because yeah, I think he had just beaten Derek Lewis. Yeah, and yeah. we thought, well, maybe he's making a resurgence, but in Ganu, I mean he has the power, but I mean, can he keep up with this with the boxing of, of JDS? And then against Rosa Strike, we thought, man, this is a good striker that's going up against Nganu. Mm-hmm. And then obviously he got blitz. So there's always uncertainty in these Nganu fights. And then he just shuts everybody up by just blitzing everybody, you know, knocking them out with one shot. Against Jones, it's the same thing. If he beats in Miocic against Jones, we don't know how Jones is going to look at heavyweight. Mm-hmm. He could be amazing. He could be slow. He could be quick. We don't know. I think Nganu, we know what he's going to do, but I just, I don't know. I think, you know, when you mentioned Ngannou's run from the Derek Lewis loss all the way up until the heavyweight title fight up until now, I was a little bit uncertain in the sense that Kane is coming off a... Kane's coming off about a three-year layoff. It was yeah. 200 where he beat Travis Brown. Yeah. So, you know, you have to take that into account. Um, Blades was also quite quite raw at the time they fought. Um, and JDS, you know, JDS was... I'm not trying to knock King Garnu, but I'd say JDS was a little past his best. Um, yeah, it wasn't until sure. it wasn't until the Rosen's track more link where I was, where I was quite sold on Garnu's second run. Um, but uh, yeah, like you said, it'll be interesting to see how he comes up against someone who can who can move as well because we know Miocic is not the best mover. Um, despite his boxing background, he tends to move back in straight lines a lot, leaves his chin up in the air. Yeah, um, and Yorno Jones is really like agile. Um, he can move. He throws in the bleak kicks. Um, he is the type of, I would say, a kryptonite for an Ngannou type of fighter. If Jones, say Jones does end up fighting Ngannou, um, I wouldn't say he toys with him because, you know, that's just discrediting Ngannou. I'd say he'll, he'll be able to give Francis all sorts of problems, you know, kicks, long-range elbows, um, oblique kicks, He's got so many, diff- so much, so much variety in his arsenal. Um, yeah. And obviously Jones, he's my all-time favourite. I would love to see him conquer light heavyweight and heavyweight. So yeah. it's, it's interesting. The fallout from this fight will be interesting to see. Yeah, and then obviously the wrestling and clinch work that, that Jones has yeah, probably. Yeah, inside work as well, yep. it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's top-notch. So it's going to be interesting. And now obviously the Coleman event, which I think is to me another interesting and amazing fight. Alexander Volkanovsky, mm-hmm. the UFC featherweight champion, going up against Brian Ortega. Yep. The guy who we thought was was kind of done, you know, after the, the Holloway fight and everything. Um, I mean, Ortega looked amazing, in, in my opinion, against Korean Zombie. I thought Korean Zombie yeah. was going to run. Th- I honestly thought Korean Zombie was going to run through him. I thought this was, man, this is the Korean Zombie. I thought it was going to be Korean Zombie's moment to take. Yep, yep. And Ortega just came in out of nowhere and looked way different. Mm-hmm. I thought that his movement was better. Mm-hmm. His instincts were better. He, it looked b- back then when he was fighting, it looked like he was a an instinctual fighter who just knew how to fight, and he had some discipline. But he was just a fighter's fighter where he he was throwing punches back. He he wasn't he wasn't he had a lot of power, but you know you can tell that the discipline wasn't there just yet. Yeah. You know it was kind of like a like a brawler type of type of thing. And mm-hmm. then against mm-hmm. or against Green Zombie. He just did some things that you know, you know, we've never seen before. He, his movement was fluid. He looked really good. I thought he looked amazing against a, a counter puncher like, like Korean Zombie. Um, obviously, we know his submission game is top notch. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Volkanovski, what is there to say about him? I I thought the two Holloway fights were close. I thought that he won the first one definitely. The second one was a lot closer. You could argue Holloway won, but I thought it was really close. I don't. I don't. I wasn't really mad either way. Um, Volkanovski is just an incredible, incredible fighter who's, mm-hmm. man, he's improved so much in so little time. It's crazy to see mm-hmm. the way he's mm-hmm. become such a great and amazing fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, and his striking is, is the way he comes up with tactics. He's a, he, he comes up with mm-hmm. tactics on the fly. So he's, he's very, very intelligent in, in the octagon. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how this fight goes. I think Volkanovski has to be the favorite because he's a champ. Um, and he has the wins against Holloway, obviously MMA math. Um, but you know, what are, what are your thoughts on this fight? It's an interesting fight because, like I said, Ortega's improved a lot from um, his last few fights. He did look good against Korean Zombie Chang Dong Jung. Um, and I don't get, you know, one thing I always say about the featherweight division is every time there's a new champion, there's always a shout that he's the greatest featherweight of all time. Yeah. Um, they had that with Jose Aldo, who I believe is yeah. the greatest featherweight oh. of all time. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Before we move on, yeah, for sure. When I heard the whole Holloway 100%. him, yeah. When 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 they heard Holloway, I was like, yeah, Holloway's definitely up there. But there's nobody, in my opinion, who's a better featherweight, yep, close yep. than Jose Aldo. You can't forget what he did at WEC and then UFC. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Dude's by far the best featherweight of all time. Even yeah, like I said, the WEC days when he leg kicked ten, when he leg kicked Uriah Faber into oblivion, it was crazy. Um, and people seem to forget it kind of discredit him just because of that whole Conor McGregor fiasco. But um, yeah, back to the current fight with uh, Volkanovski and uh, Ortega. Um, it'll be interesting because I've always seen Volkanovski as a sm- featherweight, as small anyway. But I've seen him as a smaller featherweight as well. And to be able to achieve what he's achieved, you know, beat Chad Mendes, beat Jose Aldo, beat Holloway twice. I thought two facts could have gone either way, but um, credit to Volkanovski. Um, he got the decision both bad. Um, and like I said, I've seen him as like a swarmer type of aggressive. He can do he can do a little bit of everything. You know, he can strike, he can wrestle, he can grapple, almost like a pit bull. Um, and Ortega, he said he has improved in his striking. But we all know the grappling submission is, is, is elite. Um, there's not many better submission artists at February. So I do think if it does go to the ground, that's Ortega's sweet spot, you know. Um, I would like to say he has his way with Volkanovski, but um, I'm not too sure that's the case because of Volkanovski got a good wrestling background also. But um, I would say it would be nice to have a fresh face at featherweight, um, even though Ortega's been around for a lot. But again, like we were talking about talent pools before, who is that featherweight? You know, you've got Zabit, who's, you know, we're not too sure what's happening with him. Um, I feel Zabit should have got the title shot in all fairness, but um, each to their own. Um, Yaya Rodriguez is also a bit of a... He's, I think he's a problem at featherweight too. So, again, the winner of this fight, it will be interesting to see how they hold on to their belt. Um, the fight itself, I don't see anything much other than a decision for Volkanovski, like a grindy type of grueling decision, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, I think that he has to make the side a little ugly. Yeah. Um, he's got to use his aggression. He's got to be careful because I think Ortega has become a bit better with his reactions in terms yeah, of yeah. the way he, he reacts to people coming forward. Mm-hmm. Um Man, this is it's just, to me, it's such an interesting fight, and I think it's a lot closer than some people think. Um, I think a lot of people are just holding out hope for a Holloway Volkanovski three, so they really want Volkanovski to win. Um, I don't know, man. I think I think Volkanovski pulls it off too, mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna stamp it all the way in yeah, because yeah, I just yeah. feel that Ortega's is, is much improved. Um, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of guys out there. Obviously, Holloway made his statement, but I think he gets. It's too soon to do a, a Volkanovski three Holloway fight for some yeah, people. Yeah. Um, maybe even a, a Holloway or Tega two. Um, you could do Holloway versus a beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the number one contender. Yeah, yeah. Number one contendership, and then you could also do uh, Holloway versus Rodriguez. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he's he's in the mix. Um, I mean that I think that's that's pretty much the only featherweights right now yeah, that are yeah, they're yeah. at the top. I I feel. Yeah. Um, it's featherweights. It's it's a, it's a weird division right now because we know who's the best. Well, I think I I think Volkanovski is still the best one. Obviously, people don't because they think after the Holloway performance, they they assume that it's it's Holloway again. Um, but I still think it's Volkanovski. He has the two wins. You have to understand that against against Holloway, you have he he had to you know pull everything out of the bag Indeed, for those yeah, two yeah. fights. You know he 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 deserves props for that. There's obviously Korean Zombie. He's mm-hmm. still in the mix. Uh, Calvin Gator. Uh, he's kind of in the outside of looking in. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much it from from what I see in the rankings. Um, yeah, I mean, I think follow. I mean, I think Volkanovski should pull it off. I think he has the 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 the, the, the opportunities to do it. It's a close fight, but so are the Holloway fights, and mm-hmm. I think he should do enough. Mm-hmm. If Ortega wins, which is more than possible. I think they're going to do a rematch. I think they were going to do a rematch because I think they still want to hold off Holloway. Mm-hmm. I think they're holding out hope against for against the beat because if the beat beats Holloway, that's the ultimate, you know, way of, of, oh, of yeah, getting yeah, your title yeah. shot. You know, um, I don't know who to win that fight. <laughs> that's a good fight. Um, that's a, that's an amazing fight, but you know, I think that Holloway he's and that's like looking in, he's in a tough position. He looked amazing against cater. Um, 
but I mean, I still saw the same, I still saw the same Holloway I've always seen before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, he just mm -hmm. turned it up to 10, you know, yeah, I still yeah. saw him get caught a little bit in, in everything, but he still looked amazing. Um, I think Volkanovski is going to win, but I think Ortega has a, it's a 55, 45 type of thing for me right now. It's a lot closer than, than some people think. Um, it should be a good fight, you know. It's a, yeah, it's a good yeah, fight for the featherweight division. 100%, 100%. And then uh, I guess for we'll look at two other fights on the main yeah, card. Yeah, um, we have Tyron Woodley versus Vicente Luque. I mean, we know what's going. We don't know what's going on with Woodley. Um, I, I I always thought Woodley was was better than what people gave him credit for. I think he just kind of fell into a bit of complacency. Um, people got to remember that oh he's a counter striker, but people got to remember this guy was a was an animal mm -hmm, whenever he mm -hmm. was on top, whenever he was on whenever he was going through his tear and never he had his finishes he was an animal you know i mm -hmm, thought that he was mm -hmm. he was explosive he was he was strong he was fast and not only that but he was improving his wrestling was was already there obviously already great he has i don't think he's the same fighter he once was i don't think he has the same drive uh vicente luque obviously he's a great talent um he's always been on the cusp of getting there but obviously would uh wonder boy uh, beat him. Leon Edwards beat him earlier than uh, other than that. He has wins against pretty decent guys. He has wins against guys that are almost you know you know unranked mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. fringe guys of the of the welterweight division. Um, I think Luke is going to take this fight. I think he's going to take this fight, and I think he, there even might be a finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I I love Woodley. I've always liked Woodley. Um, personally, I think that he. he um, he was a guy who didn't get his due credit when he was champion. I did think the UFC was kind of doing him a little dirty. They put him in a tough spot against Damian Maya because they wanted him to make it an all-action fight, but I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard to do that. Uh, you know, you don't want to get submitted. So I think that Woodley's not the same guy anymore. I don't think he has the same drive. I think Luke is going to take this chance, and he's finally going to get in the top five-ish um, like he, we always thought he would. Um, yeah, I think this should be Luke's fight. I think it's interesting because um, I've always given credit to Ridley where it's due. Yeah. Um, I think people cloud their judgment based on two fights against Wonderboy. You know, he's quite passive. It's quite technical. The hardcore fans will say it was technical, but the casuals who tuned in will say it's boring. Um, but to win the belt and hold it for so long, beating the likes of Darren Till, Wonderboy, Damien Meyer, and even he knocked out Robbie Lawler to win the belt. And Robbie Lawler's a tough son of a gun. It takes... You know, you can't knock that guy out with a baseball bat if you try it. So to do what he did at World's Weight, I feel his legacy is looked down upon um, as the champion. Uh, there was even shouts of him being the greatest uh, World's Weight of all time. Um, I still think it's GSP, but to be even oh, considered, yeah, sure. to be considered in that same conversation as GSP is, or even Matt Hughes, um, it's a big thing, man. But um, yeah. it's quite sad to see Ridley's decline. You know, he's, he's lost his last few fights quite comfortably as well. Um, like I said, even age and you know all the wars he's been in, longevity. <sighs> I hope he has one more run resurgence left in him, but I don't see it because when I see Vicente Luque, I don't see like I said a top ten guy. He lost his fights against Edwards and Wonderboy. Um, even a split decision against Mike Perry, who's not the best fighter. Um, mm -hmm. Mike Perry's all action, brawling uh, type of fighter. Yeah. So. I think, I wouldn't say Luke finishes him, but either we see, and I hope not, I think we're going to see a prolonged type of beatdown from Luke, and I hope that's not the case, because Woodley's got all the tools in his arsenal to give any top ball to run for his money. Um, I don't know what's gone wrong. I think the Kamaru fight, where he lost his belt, maybe that that kind of played in the back of his mind, in the sense that, um, you know, he was out grappled, he was outstruck, he was out fought to lose his belt. Um, and once you take a loss like that, it's hard to bounce back and it's been evident because he's lost in the last three fights. Um, I was quite shocked at him losing the Gilbert Burns fight because um, that's not a fight I'd expect Prime Tyron Woodley to struggle with or lose, but um, what can he do? It's MMA. Um, people have, people have, you know, people peak at different times as well. And yeah. I think he peaked around, you know, he looked his best, in the, he looked his best around just after he, around time he fought Darren Till because um, you're talking about Ridley's explosiveness his you know reactions his wrestling that Darren Till fight we saw everything um, knocked him down absolutely ruled him on the ground and at that point I thought you know Ridley's going to rule the division for a long time but um, 
clearly not. Um, we just got to wait and see what happens with Ridley from here. Um, I'm hoping if he does lose, he calls it a day because it's just too much punishment by now. But um, yeah, like I said, people do need to kind of put a bit of respect on Tyron's name because he he beat the best. And even the guys he beat, they're still in and around the contender level. Like there's talk of Wonderboy fighting for the title next, uh, fighting the winner of Masvidal and Kamaru. But um, yeah, interesting division. Um, I'm just hoping for a Ridley win because it's Tyron Ridley, he's someone I kind of not grew up on, but he's one of the first fighters I kind of took an interest in when I started watching the UFC. Um, it was a Carlos Condit fight, which is strange because Condit lost that fight with a knee injury. Mm-hmm. Since then, I've kind of, kind of followed T Wood from there, but um, it is quite sad to see. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping he hasn't got, you know, he calls it a day sometime soon, man. Yeah, what do you yeah. think, though? What do you think? Do you think if he wins this fight, do you think he maybe got one, one run left in him? Or I mean, it it could be a mental thing for all we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, his style has has been has been a little bit lack lackadaisical, you know, lately. You know, he's kind of dependent on the right hand yeah, and yeah. and stuff like that. But obviously, he that can be changed because he he, he still has time to grow. I think I still think he, he MMA is there's always room for growth. I always feel. No matter how old you are, I mean, just look at a guy like Robbie Lawler now. All those guys, you know, mm-hmm. these guys are still, mm-hmm. those guys still grew as as fighters, and yep. obviously, I think there's time for Woody to do so. Um, I think, yeah, I think if he wins, the confidence might be something he needs. He fought against he fought against some killers, you know, at, mm-hmm. after the Usman yeah, fight. Yeah. I mean, Burns and Covington were both pressuring yeah. him and completely just, you know, put him on the pedestal at a time where I don't think he was, he was, you know, necessarily, you know all the way in there. You know what I mean? I don't think he mind wise. I don't think he was 100% in there in the octagon, those two fights. Um, it almost seems like he was just in there to pick up to a kind of complete an obligation to get a paycheck. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Willie's still a great fighter. He de- definitely deserves his respect. He's like top, top four, top three, some one of the best welterweights of all time. You know, he, yep. he, he, I've been watching him since I remember watching the first fight of him was in strike force when he fought, uh, Marquardt in that crazy, mm-hmm. crazy fight. And that was when he was mm-hmm. really young. When he was barely on the come up. And, and that was when Marquardt was doing the, the whole testosterone thing. So, you know, and he still, I mean, he yeah. got finished. But, I mean, I think I thought Woodley was like, man, Woodley's proving himself here. It's mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. young guy who's about to go into the UFC. And I, I'm excited for Even though he's coming off a loss, I'm excited for him coming in. Um, and he proved himself. He proved that, that, that hype. He proved that, that prospect status that he became a champion. You know, yeah, he beat Khan that it was an injury, but he won. Um, he knocked out Dai- Dong Ayong Kim. Then he knocked out Robbie Lawler, which was mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. I, that was a huge upset, at least in my eyes. Um, and he's he, he, he's he deserves his respect. You know, I think Luke he has a chance here to take to take finally a big win over a big name. So it's, it's going to be either a coming out party for him or, you know, a resurgence of sorts. For, for Woodley. And then the other fight we'll discuss just for just really quick here is um is T- Thomas Almeida versus mm. Sugar Sean O'Malley. Thomas Almeida's coming off three losses. Uh Sugar Sean O'Malley's undefeated according to himself, but he's coming off the loss to Martin Vera. This clearly seems like a fight to put O'Malley back on the win yeah, column. Hundred percent, hundred. Yeah, this is his fight to take. This is his fight to win. It's his fight to lose if he, you know, doesn't come in prepared. He's. It's weird because I've, I've, I've seen some of the highlights of his little podcast that he does, and then yeah, the yeah. little talks that he does. He seems to be super confident. He still thinks of himself as undefeated. Oh, I'm sorry, and I understand the confidence. I understand why he, he, he's so confident. Why he, he, he feels that he deserves the win. Is something that may have been out of yeah. his control for what happened. We don't know already. It might have been the leg kicks against Martin Vera. We don't know, but um, he's confident and he feels he's going to be champ one day. I don't know if he is. He might be. Who knows? Um, but clearly, the UFC wants him to win. Clearly, the UFC wants him to win. That's why they're putting him up against Thomas Almeida. They could have put him up against anybody. You know, they could have mm-hmm. put him up against a guy who I who he's coming off a loss, but I mean, he still had some wins. The last time I think Thomas Almeida won a fight is man he hasn't won a fight since 2016 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's lost mm-hmm. against jimmy rivera rafa and jonathan martinez and even before the martinez fight which is october of 2020 he hadn't fought two years before then two and a half years when he lost to rafa 
and Rob Font's obviously on his way up as well, but um, that was 2018 when he had lost Rob Font. Then he fought in 2020 and he lost. So man, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the UFC has against Almeida, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a, this is a, um, a pick showcase. Yeah, yeah, showcase. Yeah, yeah. showcase. Um, it's interesting because I was quite big on Thomas Almeida a few years ago. You know, right before, yep. right before he fought No Love, Cody Garbrandt. Yeah, because they're talking him up as you know a big prospect in the bantamweight division. Um, he was undefeated when he fought Cody. They were both undefeated. Um, but I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a confidence thing, if his chin got found out. But questions for another day. But I think with Sean O'Malley, um, that last fight against Chito Vera, I heard all sorts of weird conspiracy theories about the loss. Um, even so, some people were saying, "Oh, uh, because of all the intoxicants and the marijuana weed, oh, uh, it weakened his legs, which is why he went over on his ankle." Blah blah blah. It's quite stupid, but um, it's an L in the record book. Um, and it'd be inter- it would be interesting to see how he bounces back from this because he's still going in with the undefeated mindset. Um, and I'm sure you've heard the saying, fat has become stronger after taking a loss. In his head, he hasn't taken a loss. So it'd be interesting to see where he's at mentally for this fight. Um, I've always thought of Sean O'Malley as a character. You know, like I said, he's got the podcast. Um, he's got bundles of talent. It's clear to see. Um, the last fight, sorry, not the last fight, the fight before the last fight against Eddie Wang, you know, the walk-off one-punch KO. Awesome. Um, yeah. It kind of reaffirmed whatever I've been saying about him. This guy, you know, he's up next to the bantamweight division. He's young, 25, 26 years old. He's got years ahead of him. Um, maybe a future champion? I don't know because we've still got some names at uh, bantamweight. Obviously, Piotr Jan Aljo, that whole situation will play itself out. Um I'm not too sure what's going on with Cejudo. Um, I'm hoping he comes back just for the entertainment factor and the fight. Um, and even Cody Garbrandt, who's kind of made a little resurgence for himself. So it'll be interesting to see um, a measuring stick, how how he does against um, Almeida will be interesting and how he does against maybe a top 10. I wouldn't say top five because, you know, in MMA terms, he's a baby. He's got years ahead of him. Yeah. Maybe someone, a fringe contender, you know, um, sorry, not a fringe contender, a fringe top 10 guy off this fight. Um, just the measuring, measuring stick to see where he's at because it's obvious Dana has kind of put all his eggs in one basket when it comes to Sean O'Malley. He's trying to build yeah. him up as a pay-per-view star. Um, but um, I, quite, I quite like Sean O'Malley. I'm hoping he puts on performance Saturday and um, I do hope he has some sort of run towards the title because he'd be... It's been a while since they've been characters at Bantamweight, you know, since the whole Dillashaw, since the whole Dillashaw crew, Scarborough storyline played itself out. It's kind of a dead in the water division. Um, so I'm hoping Sugar Sean is the one that kind of spruces up the division into life. Um, that being said, um, I do think he kind of needs to get a grip of what he does inside and outside of the octagon. I mean, I'm no, um, um, by no means am I discrediting him or knocking him what he chooses to do is his business but it's always good to concentrate on your on your fight fighting as well um i feel if he puts 100 percent focus into his fighting and into his martial arts he can be uh, a title contender and i hope he is sometime in the future because like i said i'm big on sean o'malley um, he's just got an easy on the uh, style as well he's really loose throws a lot of kicks punches from different angles um and obviously, the Sugar nickname was an ode to, you know, I'm sure it's an ode to Ray Leonard and Ray Robinson. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how far Sean O'Malley can go in the bantamweight division. Yeah, yeah, I think he he has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's talked about moving up as well because yeah, um, yeah. I think he's he a, big, a he's good a big, amount of big, weight. Big big bantamweight as well. Big bantamweight. Yeah, he's cool. huge. He's, he's very nine, tall. Five, ten, yeah, yeah. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, I think obviously I think he's gonna win this fight. I mean, I think we're gonna we just we're talking about what's next for him. I think uh, you know, someone like maybe even Casey Kenny, who just lost to Dominic Cruz, Dominic a guy Cruz, who's yeah. yeah, a guy who 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 was uh who's kind of a prospect, uh Kenny and uh um maybe even Nathaniel Wood. I love Nathaniel Wood. I, I always yeah, love watching yeah, a yeah, fight, yeah, man. That guy's yeah, yeah. that guy's a beast and uh even Jimmy Rivera is a is there's a talk there. of Nathaniel Wood as a top ten guy and kind of took yeah. a couple of losses and it's just well, he he. The last fight he had against Casey Kenny, the guy who just lost to Dominic Cruz, uh, I thought Wood won the fight. I, yeah, I yeah, from remember yeah. watching the fight, and I was like, "Man, Wood won this fight." I mm-hmm. I, I feel that they gave it to Kenny. 
I think Wood should get another decent fight against somebody in the top 15. He deserves that chance to crack against somebody because um, he's a, he's an exciting fighter, man. That guy that guy puts on a show yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I love watching him fight. That be those are two good guys. You know, they're they're test. You know, they're good. they have to test O'Malley once again sometime soon. Maybe they'll do a Martin Martin Vera Martin rematch. Chito, rematch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they could um, do a yeah they could do a Song Yedong fight. You know, the guy who beat Vera. I was thinking about Song. Yeah, I was thinking about Song Yedong before you mentioned him. Um, that would be a good test for him. Yeah, that'd be a test for him. But it just depends what the UFC wants to do. I don't know if they want to slowly put him up. I don't know if O'Malley thinks he's ready. We don't know yet. You know, we'll see what happens with Almeida. I mean, it's going to probably be a win. Almeida could pull off the upset. I mean, the guy used to was considered one time a future champion himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we I remember watching him against Brad Pickett. Um, oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. holy the shit. Flag knee. Was that, that was the flag knee. The that flag was the flag knee, knee one. Yeah. yeah, the flag knee yeah, yeah, and I was like, this guy, man, this guy's got some, this guy's got tenor, this guy's got explosiveness. You know, he could be something. I think I think no love um, exposed him a little bit. Um, but I think he, he, who knows, you know, I mean, we who knows? But, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of exciting, there's, there's not many huge fights on this next card, but it seems to be top heavy. I, I feel it's top heavy, but it should be a good card nevertheless. You know, sometimes these cards pull out something that, you know, they could be the best card. Best card of the year. There could be fights top to bottom that are all finishes or exciting fights, you know? I think it's more so a showcase for Sean O'Malley as well. In the sense yeah, that it's such a big sure. card, you know, he's got a fringe type of opponent who was once considered the top prospect. Um, so he's just going to, I hope he goes out, goes out and puts on the show for us all. Um, like I said, I wouldn't throw him against the top guys, you know, Cody Garbrandt, um, Asun Sao, Mariah. Nah, I don't think he's ready for them yet. No. Nah. Um, but it'll be, it's, it's a good, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to the card. I'm looking forward to the card. Um, I'll be tuning in for it. So, yeah. yeah, very much so. So that wraps up our, our second episode here, the sweep show. Uh, how'd you, how do you feel? Uzma? How do you, what how do you feel after that? Um, excited, man. I'm looking forward to Saturday. Um, obviously the time, the time difference might be a little bit, <laughs> I'm hoping I wake up for the last two or three fights. Um, yeah, yeah, you should be fine no, for those two. There's no way I'm going to miss uh, Miocic and Garnu because, uh, like I said, I've been a big Miocic fan since the first JDS fight. Um, and Garnu, everyone likes power punches. Um, but uh, I just hope I get the same type of feeling I did in the first fight, in that first round, where my heart was just like a pit. Um, yeah, yeah. That's really I think we are. I, yeah, I think we are. I think that we're going to have that same feeling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. I'm excited for that for the type the Coleman event as well. This, those are the two fights that I think are kind of, you know, the glue to this card. Um, Cause, uh, I'm excited. Because uh, I'll be honest with you, there's been a while where I kind of my interest kind of peaked away from MMA. You know, um, I kind of fell off it a little bit. I thought there's not much going on. Jones is retired. Masvidal's been inactive. Um, the champions aren't amazing, um, and it wasn't until the restart from coronavirus that first card between. Uh, Gage and Ferguson where I kind of thought you know what the MMA world is looking a little bit interesting now so um, yeah I'm just hoping that I just want to see a show to be honest I just want to be whether Miocic wins whether Ngannou wins I'm just looking forward to a good fight because they're both likeable guys as well um, everyone knows Ngannou's humble background Miocic as well so uh, it'd be good to see a nice guy win yeah yeah I think both guys are per both guys have, you know, been through a lot, and these mm -hmm. both guys are good guys. It's it, either way, you know, the fans are in for a good treat. Um, same with the coming event. It just should be, it should be some some great fights. I'm really excited for, really excited for for Kevin Holland and Derek oh, Brunson yeah, Derek tonight. Brunson tonight. Quick, quick yep, one yep. before we finish up. Who, who do you think wins that fight? Um, I'm hoping this is Kevin Holland's coming out party because I feel Izzy maybe needs someone like a new face to spruce, spruce up that division. Someone who's just come out of not nowhere, but who's been around for a while. And, I feel like this is Holland's chance to break into the top 10 mm -hmm. uh, because Brunson's been hit and miss his past few fights. So um, it would be, that would be an interesting fight to see as well because everyone knows Brunson, he's a dog. He likes the ball, he likes to fight. Um, so it would be interesting to see what happens to now. We might get a new contender. Um, would I be interested if, if Brunson racks up a few wins and ends up challenging Adesanya? I would, I probably would be interested in a fight like that because you know it's an underdog story. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's also a card, it kind of hasn't really come across my radar in my head because it's just 
I wouldn't say it's a nothing fight. It's got implications in the sense of like great to the top ten top fifteen. But um, uh, yeah, that would be an interesting fight. The fallout of it, fallout of it, and everything. And hopefully, we see someone like Kevin Holland or Derek Bonson against top ten guy next. That's what I'm yeah. hoping for. Yeah, I'm hoping for for a crazy fight. I, I think Kevin Holland should take it. Uh, he looks really good. Guys, isn't crazy, but. Uh, it should be a good fight. Brunson should be discounted. He should never be discounted. Um, you know, it should be a good fight. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone yeah, yeah, for course, joining course. us. Um, it's I've had a great time here talking with you, Usman. You know, it's always fun talking MMA. Um, make sure man. to check out. Yeah, make sure to check out the uh, the Punch Perfect podcast with uh, Jamie and Charlie. These guys are you know some of the smartest guys I know, and uh, we look forward to talking to you guys next. Uh, next time we should be talking about the fallout of UFC 260. Hopefully, we'll be talking about that and the next card after that. Which I believe, if uh, if I'm correct, uh, after UFC 260 is going to be Till versus Vittori. Uh, on that one Vittori, should be, yeah. yeah, that one should be a really really good fight. Uh, to see a, a lot of, I think Izzy's pointing it as the number one contender fight. So that's going to be really fun to talk about uh, for the middleweight division. Um, you can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Podbean. Um, I really enjoyed my time. Uh, Usman, any last thoughts? Um, no, nothing to be honest. I'll save them all for Saturday. Um, hoping I'm not let down by a snooze fest or something, but um, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Uh, you know, really enjoyed my time, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>